Hello, YouTube, and welcome back to another day of charting. Today, we're going to talk about Apple and how the chart is breaking down. It is giving us an M, which usually means there's more downside ahead. We also know we have elevated volume, and that is not a good sign. We're going to look at one more quick chart to make it very easy for us to understand what's going on. And we did, we did talk about this one on the weekend review. So if you want to watch that, it'll be at the very end of the video. But going here to full candle, so it's very easy to see. What Apple did was go to a new high last year. Once it lost it, it came back down and formed a massive crash. We can also note that this year it did the same thing. It went to a higher high and then fell back below. So the risk here is just that if we cannot reclaim roughly 183, the onus is on the bulls to fix the chart as of right now. Otherwise, the risk reward is just not very favorable. And the saying is that where Apple goes, the market goes. Right now, it's a sea of green out there. Apple is one of the only ones that are red. But Tesla and Apple have been very good leaders so far this year. And there is a lot at stake. So as we look at the one-day chart for Apple, objectively, one more time, we've left an upside gap, which means that if we're going to go fill this gap, we're going to be back above that key 183 area. It also means we're going to be above our 50 DMA again. So until I see those two things happen, my spidey senses are just tingling that we should be a little bit mindful of it. Not only is the biggest stock in the world giving us an annual failed breakout, the number two stock is also doing that. We know that Microsoft is now back below both its 2021 and its 2022 high. This does not mean we're going to go lower, but it gives us more evidence that there might be more than just a garden variety dip ahead. If we look forward to the reasons why Apple specifically needs to deliver, it's because they're going to be delivering their new iPhone 15 in September, which is coming up pretty fast. Just read the headline. Apple's next iPhone needs to be irresistible. A slump in smartphone sales will be tough to reverse unless consumers view the new model as a significant upgrade. That is the primary way that Apple makes money right now. Apple stock deserves the big sell-off. The iPhone 15 needs to come to the rescue. So if it's not clear yet what we need to see from the market and the king, which is what Apple is, we need to see a really big number. If we look here too, a stab, which shows us that the S&P 500 years with a 20% or more return, there are significant drawdowns. You can call these pullbacks. You can call them a crash. You can really call them whatever they want, whatever you want. But when leaders lead, followers usually follow. So right now, the leaders are telling me uh, Microsoft and uh, Apple are giving us a warning. And this goes all the way back to uh, like the 1950s. So 50%, we're looking at like 4% to a 30% drawdown. And uh, pause the video if you want to see exactly what this shows you. But to make it really simple, we're looking at either um, a garden variety or a shallow dip, which would be here in August where we look for our dead cat bounce. It happened. So we'll look at the S&P in a moment, meaning right now. But we, what we want to ask ourselves is whether or not we're getting that shallow dip are we going to rally back up to close a month out? Because remember, Apple is going to be in September. So this right here is likely going to be the Fed if they're going to do a pause. But the other side is that, well, we could be going for that big crash. I'm talking about a drawdown of like 5, 10, maybe even a little bit more. So we looked at this pattern here. Uh, we have uh, the recipe from, uh, from this week where we got the lower low. We got the red candle. We went through all this on the weekend. And the weekly chart is going to feed through to the potential for the monthly chart to give us this one, two, three, four, five crash potential. And if it plays out, this could be a 10% drawdown, which happened here into 2021 when we read all time highs. So it's not like there is a clear path on where we're going to go from here. There's just a lot of things we want to be very mindful of. So if we look here to our seasonality chart. If you remember on the weekend, I said that retail might just get it handed to them on both sides, meaning bullish and bearish. Man, they were, bull they were bullish last week, but man, are they extra bearish this week? Two out of three people think we're going to go down. So that's why I mentioned that maybe we're going to get that little bit of a rip into the first part of the week where um, into the second half of the week, we're a little bit less sure. There is light data, there is light earnings, but we do have the CPI coming in on Thursday. That's going to be a really important print. So to get a better grasp on what the market is telling us from a seasonality chart perspective, let's just zoom in nice and close. And I'm going to ask you for a huge favor, please and thank you. If you could, please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So let's look back here to our, uh, our seasonality chart. We were roughly right here. So roughly right here, let's just pull up uh, SPY. Let's go over here to a one-day chart. And there's a few things that are important here. Before we talk about the Fibonacci area, which we're trying to flirt with right now, or the uptrend, we're going to talk about a line chart a simple line chart. 
So let's delete everything and just see whether or not we're seeing some resemblance to this dip here. One dip, dead cat bounce, second cut. So one dip, dead cat, so we have one dip, dead cat bounce, there's our second cut and the attempt to go back up now. So I would say we're about right here. What this tells us is that we're pretty much gonna be flattening out. So the easiest way to try to explain this is if we maintain our current uptrend, I'm gonna go to hollow candles again now. So if we don't lose this current uptrend, which means we don't print a weekly lower low, we're gonna be maintaining our uptrend on the weekly. We're gonna be maintaining our uptrend on the daily. But if we now come back down and form another cut and we lose the 50 DMA, that is where I think we wanna be a lot more mindful of the potential for us to go down quite a bit more. So we talked about Apple being the one who's gonna be leading, but let's look at S&P and QQQ because those are really the two charts that we pay the most attention to here. So here we note that S&P have now revised my uptrend going from uh, these lows where every time we've bounced and we're flirting with this Fibonacci area again one more time at 451.76. Uh, so 452 is gonna be the key area for us to reclaim. We're not quite there yet, um, but we're getting awfully close. So this daily chart is really important. And on the weekly chart, it's the same thing. So hollow candle signal the expansion is continuing. Well, it's only been one day. It's only Monday, but the expansion looks like it wants to continue. So if that's going to be true, we want to close higher than where we opened the week. And I'm actually quite surprised we did not print a weekly lower low because we closed at the low of the week last week, which usually implies, implies downside momentum, which we didn't quite get. Buyers showed up right on that uptrend. We showed this on Friday on a 15-minute chart. They pretty much bought it up right here as we were going into the close. So at the open, at the close, we're really throttling that green line. This is a weekly chart, so it seems pretty significant. The second part is that lower lows are a warning. So last week, we got a warning because we got a lower low. We closed below the candle low. But this week, we don't have the confirmation yet. We have a higher low, 446. Here we got 447. That part's not there. The expansion looks like it wants to continue, but we haven't finished the week out yet. So I still have a big fat question mark here, whether or not the 70% retracement is going to be a bull pivot or a bear pivot. So to make it very simple, again, uh, we know the potential for a shallow dip. We cannot print a weekly lower low. And if we do, we cannot lose the 50 DMA. So if we lose last week's low, that's again, that's another warning. It's a start of confirmation, to be honest. We look here to our daily chart. If we lose our 50 DMA, currently at about 440, that's where the wheels are in motion and they're likely going to drag us lower. So if you look over here at QQQ, is it giving us that same kind of story? Because we noted that that Fibonacci area was also playing uh, playing in here. Here we got 375.66. Where are we right now? Oh my goodness, 375 and some change, which means we're right around that 70% Fibonacci retracement again here. So it means that the S&P and the NASDAQ are in lockstep together. Why does that matter? Well, because Apple is the biggest chunk of the S&P. It's the biggest chunk of the NASDAQ. And right now, it's giving us a bit of a warning where the theme for the last week is pretty obvious. It's down. But the theme for today is dead cat bounce. So we're dead cat bouncing. If it's going to be more than a dead cat bounce, we cannot lose the weekly low. By definition, that would mean we're trying a reversal. If we blow the low out for the weekly low, it means we're probably going in for a bigger cut. So QQQ getting a revised uptrend from every time we've bounced is now actually battling for the uptrend. It's not quite there which just means that the angle of ascent for the S&P is a little bit stronger because things like the Dow just crushed it. The Dow is up by 1% today, and the S&P is up by uh, 0 0.8, and the Nasdaq's up by 0 0.85. So that means that the, da the Dow is actually providing a little bit more lift than tech stocks. Second thing I would notice is that we're also battling for that math number. That's going to be that 375.66 area. So we're also above the 50 DMA, but this one might get lost first because it's a little bit closer here. Volume is elevated, but it's not uh, It's not wow yet. And looking to the weekly chart, power slammed right down to the key, key area. And I'm talking about the key area going to the March high of 371.8 or roughly uh, high 371s. What do we got this week? We got a, uh, a failed breakdown. We got 371.53 last week. And so far we got 371.51 this week. And we're back above flirting with that same area right on our uptrend. So what that means is that to make it very simple, both charts, QQQ and SPY, are battling for their Fibonacci area, which is a math area. Because remember, most trading done, most trading done is done by computers, not by humans. So when the computers are executing a script on what to do, either distribution, accumulation, buy, sell, pump, dump, 
It's all based on math. So this math, this math number here is extremely important to Apple, sorry, to S&P and to QQQ. We also have our double uptrend here on the weekly. We also have that Fibonacci area. We also have our weekly pattern. A lot of things are really synced up right now. So if we start to notice that there's more rumbles that are coming, let's just be very mindful of that. We could be headed for more than a, than a, more than a dip. Um, we're usually going to close the year off green, but nothing in, uh, nothing in this market is a guarantee and things move really fast. So we want to ask ourselves whether or not retail is giving us another perfect signal or if we're going to dead cat bounce into the first half of the week and then we're going to close the weekly out red. I think it's really going to come down to whether or not the CPI print on Thursday is either going to be received well or received not well. Meaning, is it going to be a buy or a sell? I'm not sure what that data is going to be. But let's look and see if we actually have an updated print now because we usually just get preliminary numbers. There we go. 0 0.2. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's look to CPI. Flat, a little bit higher on a year over year. Flat on a month over month. So this number right here would be the one that's a little bit of a concern because last, last month, what we said is that Man, we're within like just a whisker of getting down to 2.9. Well, now it's had to tick up by 0.3% or about 10. I don't know if that's going to be enough to take the market down. But just remember, when we went to last week, meaning uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Friday. Oops, let me just zoom out here for a second. Sorry for not having this on ahead of time. Let's go to the calendar. Let's go to Friday the 4th. Let's go apply. Because all it took for us to go down was an average hourly earnings beat of 0.1%. And then non-farm payroll going down and unemployment rate actually also ticking down by 0.1%. So if we think about that and we go to this week, this could be all it takes. In line, beat, in line. Where good data is bad. So I see the recipe for the sell-off into the second half of the week, even if it has not quite happened yet. I've laid out what it would take for us to have that, uh, that shallow dip. It's the seasonality chart. We cannot use the weekly low. We have to hold the 50 DMA. If we start going downtown, we know exactly what to look for. If you look here for another clue to our options, uh, this is on our options platform. Again, you can go to the link in the description to learn more about that 14 day free trial. You can trade with me and you can go to, you can go to the algo.com where we can clearly see that there is some positioning happening here. For in terms of volume, for every one call bot, there is 1.95 puts bot. If you look here to the dollars, it's 1.85, which means that today alone, there's been $844 million in puts bought in calls. 455, the largest orders are for Tesla, Square, SPX, Emerging Markets, Emerging Markets, and then SPX and Disney and ARK and a whole bunch of names for multi-million dollar orders. We can look at the overview here to get a, a good grasp. The number one stock people are betting against is Tesla. The number two, NVIDIA. The number three, it's EEM. Why does this matter? Well, Tesla's put call ratio is actually closer to four because we got 97 million in, in puts and we got 24 million in calls. Square looks bullish. Emerging markets is not here. NVIDIA has 17 million in calls and 46 million in puts, which is roughly a 3.3, sorry, a 3.0 3 put call ratio. Sorry for the confusion there. So what this means is that people are really betting against the stocks that have really done the best so far this year. So they're taking shots at, uh, at Apple. They're taking shots at, uh, at NVIDIA. They're taking shots at uh, Tesla. And those are really the stocks that propelled us higher. So I think that it's very clear that we're getting a red flag we just don't quite yet have that confirmation. So earlier uh, earlier in the last style, a couple of videos on the channel, we talked about a few things. And I'll just bring those up now so we can try to get a sense on why this matters right now and why you're saying red flag. Because we said red flag before. That was the, that was the day, um, I think, just before we had that big, massive drop on SPY. So I think we got a red flag here. And we talked about, ouch, is it time to sell now? Is there a red flag? Time to go down. There's a big move coming. There's a bear move. So from the warning we gave last week, I believe we are now seeing some of those warning signs for us to maybe be going lower, even if we don't have the final confirmation yet, which will only come on a Friday closing basis, which really means the 11. If you want to watch more content, you can now see that, uh, that we can review here, which tells us about, about whether, whether or not it might be time to sell the exact bear market setup that I'm looking for. And if not, I thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you again.